This ancient story begins many years ago, showing a time when no pyramids had yet been built on Earth. The people who existed back then lived together in small tribes. There were no rules or regulations of any kind at that time. But after some time, a king named Memnon began to gradually destroy all the settlements and bring them under his control. Memnon's main goal was to conquer the entire world. He would fight every king and incorporate their people into his own tribe. Memnon fought many battles with his soldiers and won them all. The main reason for his success was a dangerous witch who used her black magic to always inform Memnon about future possibilities. Based on these predictions, Memnon would strategize and win every battle. In this way, he greatly expanded his empire, and soon he would become the new king of a very large empire by defeating a few more tribes. Before engaging in battle with any tribe, Memnon would always consult his dark witch to learn all possible outcomes. As a result, Memnon always emerged victorious. Many tribes, upon hearing Memnon's name, would surrender without a fight. However, there was one tribe whose king refused to bow before Memnon. This king believed that he was the best leader for his tribe and could not leave his people to die. Therefore, the king of this small tribe summoned three fierce warriors whose entire families had been killed by Memnon and his army. Only these three family members had survived. The king knew that these three were the best soldiers in his tribe. He offered one of them, named Matthias, a reward of 20 diamond bullets if he could kill Memnon by any means. These diamonds were extremely valuable at that time. Matthias and his two companions agreed to the king's offer and set out on their mission to kill Memnon. One of them was Matthias's brother, and the other was a very good friend. Matthias could not afford to lose either of them. They reached the stronghold where King Memnon and his dark which were staying. Although Matthias, his brother, and his friend were continuously searching for the witch, Memnon's soldiers suddenly attacked them. Arrows started flying from all directions, making it extremely difficult to escape. And now, in this attack, Matthias's friend lost his life. Memnon's tribe captured Matthias's brother and took him prisoner, but Matthias managed to save himself and climbed onto a tent. This tent belonged to the Dark Witch, and Matthias was trying to break in. After much difficulty, Matthias finally found the Dark Witch and immediately pointed his sharp arrow at her. Surprisingly, the Dark Witch already knew all this. Fearlessly, she told Matthias that he couldn't do this. As she said this, several of Memnon's soldiers entered the tent. Although Matthias killed many soldiers, he couldn't do anything against such a large number attacking at once. Matthias was also captured, like his brother, and was brought before Memnon. It seemed that Leo, the son of the old king, had joined Memnon. Leo had betrayed his own father and killed him because he realized that no one could fight against Memnon. Now, Matthias and his brother were held captive by Memnon's men. Memnon arrived at the scene and brutally killed Matthias's brother right in front of him. Matthias screamed in anguish, but no one came to his aid. Memnon then approached Matthias to kill him as well because they had attacked his soldiers secretly, and Memnon never left anyone alive who did such a thing. However, as Memnon was about to kill Matthias, the Dark Witch intervened and stopped him. The Dark Witch told Memnon that she had seen the future, and if he killed Matthias, it would be disastrous for them. All the kingdoms and wealth Memnon had gathered would be lost because Matthias was a precious servant of God. God was always ready to help Matthias as he was a devoted follower. Due to the witch's repeated warnings, Memnon decided not to kill Matthias but decided to punish him instead. Memnon ordered his soldiers to bury Matthias and another thief with him underground. Their entire bodies were trapped beneath the ground with no way out. Dangerous insects started to approach them in their underground trap. Although these insects were small, they had abilities that allowed them to devour any human completely. Matthias and the thief were in serious trouble as the insects continued to advance towards them. Suddenly, Matthias noticed that the thief next to him had already freed himself because he was accustomed to such situations. Seeing Matthias's plight, the thief decided to help him. The thief lit a small fire to keep the insects away from Matthias because even one insect bite could be deadly. Somehow, the thief kept the insects at bay and managed to pull Matthias out of the ground. Matthias, though free, was determined to avenge his brother and his fallen friends. 
So, Matthias decided that he would go to Memnon's kingdom and destroy his entire reign, along with Memnon himself. The cunning thief also set out with Matthias towards Memnon's kingdom, determined to not rest until they had killed Memnon. They embarked on a long journey through a rocky region. Meanwhile, on the other side, Memnon was shown preparing to attack the remaining kingdoms to bring them under his control. He had his entire army ready for the assault. But then, the Dark Witch saw something in her visions of the future. Based on these visions, she advised Memnon that he should not proceed with his plans. She warned him that attempting to conquer all the kingdoms through war and bloodshed would lead to dire consequences. However, Memnon had made up his mind completely. He declared that he would bring the entire empire under his control and become the new king of the world, regardless of who stood in his way. Memnon even promised the Dark Witch that he would marry her once his conquests were complete. The Dark Witch reminded him that if they married, she would lose her ability to see the future and thus could no longer prepare him for what lay ahead. Memnon dismissed this concern, saying that once he became the king of the world, they wouldn't need her abilities because they would be the most powerful beings. The Dark Witch pondered over this, but there was nothing she could do against Memnon's decision. We now see Matthias and the thief traveling relentlessly until they reached Memnon's kingdom. Matthias, along with the thief, entered Memnon's kingdom and started looking for a way to reach Memnon's palace. Memnon, on the other hand, was seen in a large market in the kingdom, where all essential items were available. Suddenly, some mischievous children from the kingdom were shown, one of whom approached Matthias and stole a bag from him. This bag contained the same red diamonds that the king had given Matthias as a reward. When Matthias realized this, he immediately started chasing the child because those diamonds were his lifetime's worth of wealth. Although the children were small, they were very quick and agile. However, the children knew all the places in the kingdom very well. After much effort, Matthias finally caught the child who had taken all the red diamonds. The child had even hidden one diamond in his mouth, but Matthias managed to retrieve that as well. Realizing that the child knew the kingdom well, Matthias asked him if he could lead him to King Memnon's palace. The child, excited to help, agreed and started guiding Matthias towards Memnon's palace. As they continued their journey, they entered a chamber where an old man was conducting experiments. The chamber was filled with various explosive devices. Hearing the name Memnon from the old man's mouth, Matthias approached him to ask where Memnon was at that moment, as Matthias was determined to find and kill Memnon. The old man told him that it wouldn't be easy and that he would need his help. However, Matthias was confident that he could do it alone. After much persuasion, the old man finally revealed that Memnon was currently practicing sword fighting in the palace. Without wasting any time, Matthias set out for the palace. As a reward for helping him, he gave one of the red diamonds to the child, who was very happy and left. Matthias then killed some soldiers and entered the palace, where he took aim at Memnon. There were no soldiers around Memnon, giving Matthias a perfect opportunity to kill him. Matthias quickly readied his bow and arrow, aiming at Memnon. Just then, Memnon's soldiers arrived, dragging the child whom Matthias had given the red diamond. The soldiers and Memnon were shocked to see the child with the red diamond, as these diamonds were very valuable. They thought the child had stolen them from the kingdom. Memnon ordered his soldiers to cut off the child's hand as punishment. The soldiers prepared themselves to carry out the order and began to take the child to a different location to cut off his hand. Matthias was now in a dilemma, not knowing whether to kill Memnon or save the child. This was the best chance he might ever get to kill Memnon, but he couldn't let the child suffer. After much thought, Matthias decided to save the child. Just as the soldiers were about to cut off the child's hand, Matthias shot an arrow, knocking the weapon out of the soldier's hand. All the soldiers realized that Matthias was present. The soldiers began attacking Matthias relentlessly, trying to kill him. However, Matthias was incredibly agile and managed to escape, only to find himself stumbling into the Dark Witch's tent by accident. Seizing the opportunity, Matthias captured the Dark Witch, threatening to kill her if she did not comply with his demands. Meanwhile, the soldiers searched the entire kingdom for Matthias, but he cleverly disguised himself and the Dark Witch, 
slipping away unnoticed. Matthias knew that having the dark witch with him would eventually draw Memnon out, and hoped that this would protect the child from further harm. The dark witch remained calm, understanding that Matthias was not a bad person, but was acting out of necessity to protect himself and his people. Matthias included the dark witch in his journey, and they traveled together across the desert. During their journey, Matthias explained to the dark witch that Memnon was a dangerous king who would kill her once she was no longer useful to him. After traveling for a long time, they decided to rest for the night. Matthias and his thief companion fell into a deep sleep. The dark witch, seeing an opportunity, tried to escape. However, Matthias had tied a rope to her leg, which alerted him to her movements. Catching up with her, Matthias asked why she wanted to return to Memnon. The dark witch revealed that Memnon had taken her in and given her a place to stay after her entire family had been killed. She had been working for him ever since, essentially as his slave. Matthias then asked why she had saved him when everyone else was trying to kill him. The dark witch admitted that she had foreseen that he would be the one to rescue her. Understanding her situation, Matthias cut the rope from her leg and told her she was free to leave if she wished, but warned her that the world outside was full of dangerous people and creatures. He left the decision to her. After much contemplation, the dark witch decided to stay with Matthias, realizing that she could not return to Memnon's oppressive control. The next morning, Matthias noticed that Memnon had not come personally but had sent a large army of soldiers after them. Matthias didn't want to put the dark witch and his thief friend in any danger because of him, so he decided to fight the soldiers alone. He had a plan. He tied a strange bandage over his eyes because he knew a sandstorm was about to hit the desert, moving towards the soldiers. He put on a mask and rode his horse towards the soldiers as the sandstorm loomed closer. The sandstorm engulfed the area, making it hard for the soldiers to see. Matthias, having prepared for this, took advantage of the situation and began killing the soldiers one by one. None of them could fight back effectively due to the blinding sand. His plan was working perfectly, and he almost wiped out all the soldiers. However, one of Memnon's special soldiers had a plan to kill Matthias. This soldier had dipped his arrow in the venom of a dead scorpion. The special soldier shot Matthias in the leg, causing him immense pain as the venom started spreading through his body. The soldier and his men then retreated, leaving Matthias to die a slow, painful death. The poison quickly took its toll, and Matthias fell unconscious. When the dark witch found out, she was furious. Matthias had saved her life, and she couldn't just sit back and do nothing. Using her dark powers, she extracted all the poison from Matthias's body. He recovered quickly, thanks to the dark witch's magic. Matthias then sent a letter to Memnon using a bird, warning him that he would come and destroy him. Memnon, however, kept this letter a secret from his soldiers. He lied, telling them that Matthias had died from the poison. When the soldiers asked about the dark witch, Memnon lied again, saying she was unwell and resting in the palace. He knew that if the soldiers found out the truth, their morale would plummet, and they wouldn't be able to carry out their mission effectively. Meanwhile, Matthias and his companions, struggling with dehydration, searched desperately for water. As the trio continued their journey through the desert, they heard a massive explosion nearby. The blast was unlike anything they had ever seen before. When they approached the source, they found the old man who was known for creating large bombs in his laboratory. The old man, excited, revealed that he had finally perfected a bomb powerful enough to destroy their enemies. He had left the palace because the soldiers there had forbidden him from conducting such dangerous experiments. The old man was shocked to see the dark witch with Matthias, as she had previously worked with King Memnon. After understanding the situation, the old man decided to join Matthias on his journey. The four of them continued their quest to find water. Eventually, they found a source and drank eagerly, but they were soon captured by a group of tribal people. This tribe had been living in hiding to avoid King Memnon's rule. They didn't want Memnon to oppress them. The tribe's leader recognized Matthias, but there was always a sense of competition between them. The leader demanded that Matthias hand over the Dark Witch. Matthias, however, refused to betray her and stood up to the leader, 
saying that if they wanted to take her, they would have to fight him first. The tribe's leader, infuriated, accepted the challenge and descended to fight Matthias. The ensuing battle was intense, as both were equally matched in weight and fighting techniques. However, Matthias had the advantage of diverse combat skills he had learned over time. Instead of relying solely on strength, he used his skills to defeat the tribe's leader. After defeating him, Matthias explained that their common enemy was King Memnon and that they should unite against him rather than fight each other. The tribe's leader, initially skeptical, pointed out Memnon's large and powerful army. Matthias responded that if they provided him with support, he would fight the soldiers alone for their collective freedom. Impressed by Matthias's determination and leadership, the tribe's leader and his people accepted them into their fold. They agreed to join forces to confront King Memnon and fight for their freedom together. Matthias decided to stay with the tribe for a few days to plan their next move. Meanwhile, the dark which encountered a young boy from the tribe, which made her smile. However, she soon experienced a troubling vision of the future. In this vision, she saw Memnon's soldiers attacking the tribe, resulting in the deaths of many innocent people. Determined to prevent this outcome, she went directly to Matthias to warn him about the impending danger. Matthias listened to her concerns but responded bravely, stating that they would face the soldiers together. He believed that running away would not solve anything, as the soldiers would eventually find them. The Dark Witch, still deeply worried, placed her hand on Matthias. She had another vision, this time seeing Matthias begging for his life during the battle. She immediately told him about this vision, warning him that he would die in the fight and that it was his destiny. Matthias laughed and said that if it was his destiny to die, he was ready to sacrifice his life, but he would fight with all his might to defeat the soldiers. Over time, Matthias and the Dark Witch grew closer and eventually started a romantic relationship. As time passed, the Dark Witch's ability to see the future faded away because there was a condition that if she entered into a relationship, she would lose her powers, turning her into a normal human being. One night, feeling conflicted and vulnerable without her powers, the Dark Witch mounted a horse and headed straight for Memnon's palace. When Matthias discovered her departure the next morning, he was furious. He had never expected her to abandon him in their time of need. Realizing that she must have gone to Memnon's palace, Matthias immediately set off after her, determined to protect her at all costs. As he prepared to leave, the tribe's leader was moved by Matthias's bravery and declared that they would not let him face the danger alone. They pledged to support him in the upcoming battle. Meanwhile, in Memnon's palace, preparations for the confrontation were already underway. The tension was high as both sides geared up for the impending clash. Matthias, now more determined than ever, rode towards Memnon's kingdom, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead and to ensure the safety of the Dark Witch and the tribe. The tribe's support bolstered his resolve as they all united under a common cause, setting the stage for an epic confrontation with King Memnon and his forces. It was that night when Dark Witch would use her full power to reveal the future. Now, Queen Memnon began to inquire about where Dark Witch was, because she hadn't seen Dark Witch for many days. Only Memnon knew that Dark Witch was not present in the palace. She started to get quite worried about what to do next, when suddenly, in the next moment, Dark Witch appeared there. Seeing Dark Witch, all the soldiers were very happy. Now, Dark Witch was telling everyone here that we are going to win tomorrow's battle. The enemy will come to us by themselves and will be defeated by themselves. But somewhere, Queen Memnon began to have doubts about Dark Witch. She realized that maybe Dark Witch's abilities to see the future had ended. Now, to test Dark Witch, Queen Memnon had placed six clay pots in front of her. In four pots, there were poisonous snakes. Now, Dark Witch had to use her ability to put her hand inside the pot which doesn't have a snake. Dark Witch was a little scared of this. On the other hand, we saw that Mithuiz and all his tribe members were trying to infiltrate. They had already started killing all the soldiers who were about to come in front of them. And now, along with Mithuiz, there was also an old man who had made many bombs and had given them to Mithuiz's tribe. And now, those tribe members were planting those bombs all around the palace, meaning they had come with a full plan. Now, Dark Witch had to put her hand inside one of the six pots. 
That's why she put her hand inside one pot in which there was a snake. But that snake did not bite Dark Witch. After that, which showed Memnon that you are very bad, you are so selfish that you do not even think about others, and because of this you do not even deserve this empire. Memnon was very angry at this, so he continued to move forward to kill Dark Witch. Then suddenly, Methesa arrives there, who starts attacking Memnon, and now a fierce battle ensues between the two. On the other side, the leader of the tribe had also killed the king's son, who had just reconciled with Memnon after killing his father. The tribe's leader was continuously advancing by killing soldiers in the same way. Because he had to do that, now Mythis had put clay in Mythis' palms, so Mythis could not see all these things and now a soldier comes from behind with his bow and arrow. He fired the arrow at Mythis and Dark which saw this thing and she understood that maybe this is the same moment when Mythis will die, so she continued to run to surprise Mythis. At this moment, Mythis already knew about it and he directly avoided Dark Witch, so Mythis has now lied to the Dark Witch. We'll take it so Emiemnon can kill Dark Witch, so Mythis bravely rises and takes the arrow on his back. He had a bow and arrow in his hand, which he was pointing at Memnon. That's why Emiemnon was very confident because he used his sword to stop the attack with this kind of arrow, but this time he was so much faster than Mythalida. So M.E.M. Nant's arrow suddenly doubled in speed and the arrow went straight to M.E.M. Nant's chest. Memnon couldn't see him at all to stop him. Memnon was very badly wounded and started falling down. Right then Mithales, the thief at work, activated the bomb placed all around the palace, causing explosions to start occurring continuously around the palace. All of Memnon's soldiers were being killed after entering into the explosion, while Memnon himself who fell from height was killed inside this explosion. Soon after seeing this, Maim Nant's entire army was finished. Mithraiz also came out of there with all his companions and now all the people of that empire consider Mithraiz as their new king after Maim Nant, because Mithraiz had a lot of compassion and worked for goodness. Everything was completely normal. The leader of the other tribe was going there the next day, who was congratulating Mithraiz because he finally got what he wanted since childhood. Dark which was telling Mithraiz that now there will be peace and tranquility in this empire. Mithraiz was feeling quite guilty because he recently found out that all his abilities were over with his relationship with Dark Witch, but Dark Witch said that it was not at all like that. I made all these things just for rumors causing fear in Memnon. Then Mithraiz asked Dark Witch till when will peace and tranquility continue in this empire. Dark Witch said with sadness that just as humans have a destiny, so too did the empire, and no one could always be the king of this place, but as long as Mithraiz remains the king of this place, people here will remain protected and happy. With this good ending, our story ends here.